Welcome to Let the Front End Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. In our series on biological evolution, we'll begin our discussion by outlining the theory of evolution itself. Before we can figure out how evolution aligns with the Islamic understanding of human life, we need to take some time to unpack the evolution theory itself. Let's start this exciting conversation with Dr. Shabir Ali. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on. So we're talking about biological evolution, and uh, on our segment today, we'll focus specifically on the scientific theory. So can you uh, contextualize it for us a bit? Yeah. Uh, first, we need to understand the theory uh, well and understand it from scientists themselves because there's a lot of misinformation um, out there, especially com coming from persons who just simply want to attack the theory and, and, and prove it wrong. Uh, and I should add that uh, I was of that category at one time, mm -hmm. too. When I first started preaching uh, Islam in public, I gave lectures trying to denounce the theory and find holes in it, uh, prove it wrong. Uh, but the more I studied the, the theory from uh, books written by experts in the field, uh, I came to understand it uh, better. Uh, so even what I want to say now should not be taken as a replacement for um, studying the theory from the known experts in the field. But uh, uh, as a preface to uh, discussing the religious view, mm -hmm. we can just make a few brief observations about uh, what the theory is. So. Basically, as, as we all know by now, uh, the, the theory started out with uh, Charles Darwin and the observations that he made um, oh, when, when he voyaged on, on the Beagle um, to South America and to some of the islands um, around that region. Uh, he, he noticed uh, uh, the variety of species of birds in particular, and uh, more generally, he thought about uh, the reason why uh, species diverge from, from each other. Um, while they share certain similarities, uh, they have certain differences as well. And why do these differences uh, occur? Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he wrote his book uh, entitled The Origin of the Species. I have a copy here, uh, Origin of the Species. And I, I wanted to um, share with uh, our viewers uh, his conclusion uh, to the book. I want to show that, in fact, uh, the way he concluded his book shows that he, he was not anti-religious and uh, he, he saw his theory as uh, uh, meshing with uh, the idea of a, of a creator, but to him, the, the creator, uh, rather than create every each species individually and separately, he breathed life into some original forms or one original form and then allowed that to evolve over time with the passing of the ages. So this is what he says, uh, basically the last sentence of his book. It's a long one, a long sentence. Uh, he writes, there is grandeur in this view of life with its several powers, having been originally breathed by the creator into a few forms or into one, and that whilst this planet has gone cycling on uh, according to the fixed law of gravity from so simple a beginning, endless forms, most beautiful and most wonderful, have been and are being evolved. So are you saying because of the way he's positioned it, the way he's wrapped everything up, that there is possibility that this theory could somehow uh, balance itself out with how we see religion? Yes, of course, he, he, uh, uh, even if he hadn't said it, uh, there are scientists now and, and people of religion who are uh, seeking a convergence uh, of the two streams of thought here, mm -hmm. um, scientific view on the theory of evolution, a uh, religious view that God created the, the universe. But the fact that he said it already, um, shows that from the inception it was not conceived of as a, as a theory that needs to exclude God. Mm -hmm. and, and often the debates about this um, uh, seem to come from that angle. It's either uh, you believe in the scientific theory in which you, God is out of the picture, or you believe in God, in which case you cannot believe in the scientific theory. And um, um, what I want to project in this show is that in fact uh, one can find a harmony between the two, uh, but what, where the harmony lies and where the differences uh, may exist, uh, th this is, these are the details that, that we will need to discuss. Now obviously the evolution theory didn't stop with Darwinism, I'm sure it's evolved over the years, so based on your research what can you share about how it's evolved? 
Yes, 150 years um, uh, later, uh, we um, have accumulated uh, a large body of data from many scientists studying this from many different angles and bringing many disciplines uh, together to comment on this issue. Um, there is the rise of genetics, for example, and with genetic science, we can uh, trace, uh, you know, we, we look at uh, uh, a, a baby and we say this baby has got his grandfather's eyes or you know his uh, mother's lips and so on uh, but then we, we can we can go further and say you know maybe there is uh, blue eyes was uh, you know a few generations ago it was a recessive uh, trait and then it suddenly reappeared in a later generation uh, well more than this uh, geneticists are able to trace uh, the, the uh, an individual back many many generations and um, so with this kind of uh, science uh, in mind we're, we're, we're looking at the way in which uh, the genes change and evolve uh, over time um, so, so that's one area that has been brought to this uh, and, and many other areas of, of science. Uh, so we go that, sorry, with that genetics point, is that also alluding and reinforcing the idea of evolution? Yes, all of, all of these various areas actually confirm that uh, evolution does uh, continue. Uh, Dennis uh, Venema, in, in a, a book in which he co-authored entitled Adam and the Genome, um, has uh, likened uh, genetic studies uh, and, and the evolution of um, and genetic material um, to the evolution of language. Languages change over time and in fact um, our genes are coded with uh, certain letters that scientists use to represent the various chemicals A, C, uh, G and T mm -hmm. and um, basically our chromosomes um, have uh, some three uh, million um, as such um, letters uh, in, in each, so you, uh, of, of each of two, so you have like six million altogether. Uh, that, that makes a very long sequence and it, no two sequences are uh, identical. That's why we can pin a certain person uh, to a crime scene based on his or her DNA because that's a very unique, um, that's better than fingerprint in a way. Um, so the uh, th this uh, way uh, allows us now to trace the evolution we can see that uh, there there are genetic mutations uh, from one person to another from one generation to another even uh, with identical twins you have a difference in the dna from one to another though the differences are subtle but the differences are there so this allows you to trace a family tree and to see where uh, differences have occurred and where people have branched away uh, from each other based on these differences. Um, another area that has been brought to this is, uh, might be simply explained, uh, simply explained by our own experience of going to a doctor when uh, we have a virus. The doctor says, okay, you have a virus, I'm giving you this antibiotic, but you must use the entire dose, uh, for whether it's 10 days dose or whatever it is. Why must you use the entire dose? After a few days, you may feel, okay, I feel better. I, I mm -hmm. can just stop uh, using the medication. But uh, if you do not use the entire dose, then what happens is that in the early days of using this, you kill off the weak uh, viruses. And uh, then um, uh, the, the stronger ones remain. You have to use the entire dose to kill them all off. Otherwise, the stronger ones remain and then they replicate and, and their offspring um, might even be stronger than, than their parents. Some of them, some of them will actually be weaker, some of them will be stronger, and the stronger ones will attack you <laughs> with, yeah. with greater uh, potency. And uh, in fact, now we know more universally that um, w scientists are, are um, looking at the emergence of what they call superbugs. Because after we've been killing off bugs for so many uh, decades with uh, the medication we've been using, uh, we have been killing off the weaker ones, but the stronger ones uh, have been uh, surviving and even mutating into even stronger ones. And so, so that would, they, would we say that they've also been, if, if they're mutating and developing, is that also the same as evo like evolving? Yes, exactly. And that's precisely what's happening basically in biological uh, life more generally. Uh, let, let, let's take a simple example of uh, a, 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 a dog um, 
you know, a female dog having some babies. Uh, well, uh, among her pups, uh, there will be some who are relatively stronger than their siblings. Uh, if a piece of meat is thrown to them, the stronger ones will scare off the others and get the piece of meat. Uh, now, uh, with this in mind, naturally, the, the stronger one will be better fed and, and more likely have the opportunity to breed. Not only will, will he have the opportunity when, uh, or, or she when, when it comes to uh, having this meat, but also when it comes to breeding time. Uh, so naturally the stronger ones will be the ones that tend to leave offspring and the offspring will inherit the, the strong traits from the parent. And, and those among the offsprings, again, you might have some weak and some strong relatively within that uh, group. Mm -hmm. uh, the stronger ones will tend to survive and, and to leave offspring. And so uh, with each generation, you, you can have uh, a, a, a slight incremental change mm -hmm. of strength from one to another uh, until you, you have one evolving with some kind of uh, super strength. And it doesn't have to be strength only, but certain traits that are uh, more beneficial to survival uh, or more conducive to the leaving of offspring um, will continue in the offsprings and in the offspring of the offspring and so on with further mutations either enhancing that trait or, uh, or, or adding uh, new traits over time. I'm sure there's more to discuss but we'll leave our viewers hanging and we'll follow up uh, at our next segment. So thank you very much Dr. Shabir. You're quite welcome. Hey YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.